when you know your why, your what has more impact because you're walking in or toward your purpose. Today, we are going to unpack again our purpose. See, over Easter, we had the privilege of hosting Major Malcolm Herring with us, a good, godly man who walks his talk, who lives and breathes the salvation message. And in our conversations, he kept saying, vision leaks. And at first, I thought this was a good thing. Oh, yeah, I'm thinking, leak the vision so it spreads. But later that week, I realized that he was saying that because vision leaks, we have to keep repeating it, lest we forget. So a lot of what you are going to hear today, you have heard before, unless it has leaked. In 20, uh, 2016, the Salvation Army launched the new mission plan, as it was felt by the Salvation Army leadership that God was, is, calling us, the Salvation Army, back to a focus on our hearts and attitudes, to consider why do we really do what we do. Clarity of our purpose was needed, our why? Because as we saw in the clip earlier, when we know our why, our what has more impact. Yeah. Impact on us and those around us because we are walking in or toward our purpose. Our purpose needs to be voiced regularly because vision leaks. In summarising the life of Jesus, John writes that his gospel was written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is our why. We want people to have this full and forever life that comes through a relationship with Jesus. One of the ways Jesus describes his mission was to bring life. For example, in John 10.10, 10, Jesus is recorded as saying, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. full. But what is this life? The Ope Whaka order is Māori for the Salvation Army. The Ope means the group, order the life. Prefix to some nouns, whaka order now becomes a verb, an action word, to bring or to do life. So, the ope whaka order means the group, or in our case, the army that brings life. Bringing the life that Jesus describes is the overall purpose of the mission plan. So, what does this mission plan look like? In practice. It means each of us living like Jesus and doing mission together, introducing people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus so they can find the fullness of life that only Jesus offers. In other words, we exist to bring people into a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. We exist to bring people into a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. Can you say it with me, please? We exist to bring people into a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. And in moving forward, the Whangarei Core Council believe that this statement that other Salvation Army Corps have adapted long before the mission plan was refocused is the new mission statement of the Salvation Army, Whangarei. So we exist to bring people into a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. As you have heard, this fits in well with the mission plan of the Salvation Army territory. And so much more than this, though, it fits in well with the mission of the church when Jesus told his disciples to go. go. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the 
Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. The mission of the church is to make disciples of non-disciples. That's from David Mann. The mission of the church is to make disciples of non-disciples. That's why we exist. We exist to bring people into a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. So practically that means we all, we all have to do something. Because yes, I suppose someone could develop a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ through osmosis, yeah. But in the norm, to be, a disi- to be discipled well, it takes some effort from somebody else, someone like you and me, journeying along some, alongside someone. And as I've quoted before, every Christian is called to be a relational evangelist in the same way that every Christian is called to love and serve. Evangelism is supposed to be part of the bread and butter of Christian life, not a gift that only some of us have. It's all our job. That's why our mission statement starts with, we exist. We have to own it, family. To go. Well, maybe not very comfortable for some of us. Like exercise, most don't particularly like it. But we are told to get out of our comfort zones. You know, like Peter, who was in the boat, saw Jesus coming across the water, and he asked if he could get out of the boat and walk over the water too. Yes, he sunk, but at least he got out of the boat. You see, we don't need faith to stay in the boat. We need faith to get out of the boat. We can talk, we can all take part in a conversation. We can all share about the hope we have. We can all tell our story. David Mann of the Hope Project states, the primary challenge the average Western Christian faces isn't in knowing how to articulate the gospel. We know that. It's how to get an open, non-threatening and non-awkward two-way conversation started with the person about spiritual things. This conversational outreach, it's nothing new, but it's foundational to our outreach. We can do this, family. We can be a church that exists to bring people into a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. We can do this. We can do this well together. Our purpose reflects why we exist. Our values, of which there are seven, and I haven't covered these this morning, but we have covered them before, but they are in here. Sorry. There's a few of them available on the um, table out the front. This little booklet, that's what you're looking for. For you to have a little read about this. Sorry. But they are in here. There are copies on the Connect table. They reflect who we are. Our mission reflects what we do. The new mission plan of New Zealand, Fiji, Tonga and Samoa was refocused because the Salvation Army leadership believed that God was calling us back to focus on our hearts and attitudes. There's a saying that culture eats strategy. In other words, even with the best plans in the world, people's hearts and attitudes determine what is achieved. Now I have quoted from a book which um, I've revisited by David Mann this morning. He's one of the people responsible for those little books you get in your letterbox around Easter time. He talks of the the discouragement so many churches have in the evangelism efforts. He feels as though churches are putting evangelism into the too hard basket. This discouragement, he says, results from a lack of faith and vision. It comes about when we let our disappointment sink 
to our hearts and affect what we believe is possible. And of this, he says, is a sin. Discouragement is a sin. In the first chapter of Joshua, God tells Joshua, I will give you every place where you set your foot. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. In verse 6, um, God says to Josh, be strong and courageous. And God says, be strong and courageous to Joshua at least another three times in that chapter alone. Be strong and courageous. Oh, Joshua was going into battle, you say, and yes, you were right. But what I know, and I regularly forget this, is that we are constantly in a battle. Even now, we are in a battle. A battle for the hearts and minds of the lost. It's just that the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds and every pretense that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. So we fight our battle on our knees. And Gail, you said that earlier. We fight our battle on our knees. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. God will never fail us. Other people might but God never will. However, if your God has or is failing you, get rid of that God. Come and meet this God, the God of Moses and Jacob, my God. He will never fail you. The key to our triumph, I was reading this morning in my um, sort of Bible study notes, the key to our triumph, triumph, as it was to all the saints throughout history, the key to our triumph is the presence of the Lord. The awareness of his presence will energize and help us face whatever he calls us to do. So how's our hearts and attitudes? Amen. God told Joshua more than once, be strong and courageous. Maybe Joshua was feeling inadequate. Maybe he was doubting. Maybe he was a little scared. Maybe he didn't want to do the job God had given him to do. Maybe he just needed to check his heart and attitude. And God, his God, our God, the same God, told him, be strong and courageous. To do this, we need to do our part. We need to be battling on our knees for the hearts and minds of those who are lost. So like us, they can be in a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. We need to be hearing God's word. That's one reason we are here today. We need to be reading God's word. We need to be studying God's word. Praise God for life groups, eh? Yeah? Hallelujah. We need to be memorizing God's word. We need to be meditating on God's word. If we want to be more than a bless me club, okay, we want to be more than that. If we want to be all, all that God has called us to be, if we want to be able to bring people into a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ, we have to be willing to do our part. How's our hearts and attitudes? We exist to bring people into a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, what will you do? Let us pray. Father, as we now move into a time of reflection, of continued worship, may your spirit meet our spirit. Help us to check our hearts 
our attitudes. If you've challenged us about this, Father, I just pray that we will choose to respond in the way that you would have us today. For your kingdom, your power, and your glory. Amen.